To some, the pioneering leaders who built Singapore's economy to what it is today were entrepreneurs in their own right with a dare to dream, dare to do attitude. Today, the perception is that the current civil servants are more risk averse, more focused on not rock rocking the boat before their next posting. How do you intend to foster the entrepreneurial and innovation culture so that we can navigate the next 50 years? It's, it is a challenge. I would, it's not as bad as that because actually we do continue to innovate and do new things. And if you look at the way we are redeveloping our city or redeveloping our economic policy or um, making our healthcare system or our housing, there's a lot of trial and innovation going on. But the mindset of it, I think, has to go more deeply, and we have to be we're more willing to do it across the board in small things as well as big. And it's a matter of setting the example. It's also a matter of giving our officers the confidence that if they do something, we will support them. And if, there is a, if it becomes an issue and they've done it for good motive and with good judgment, we will defend them. I think that is necessary. So when things go wrong, it's a big, it's a very difficult decision for the perm sec or for the minister to make. Is this something which was stupid and should be, we should tell, make sure everybody knows this was stupid and should never be done again? Or is this something which was well-intentioned and sensible but did not work out well and we must not discourage the officer from ever trying such a thing again. And if, in fact, it was well-intentioned or there was, there was no malice and things didn't work out well, then the ministers have to have the courage to stand up and say, this didn't work out, I understand, I take responsibility, but I will not chop off heads in my organisation because that's the wrong thing to do. Very often when you have such a situation, you have an outcry. People say, who is to blame? Hold him to account. He needs to be berated, disciplined, hung, drowned, and quartered. I only exaggerate slightly. <laughs> I, it's a bit more muted in the mainstream media, a bit less muted, and even more wild online. But these are the pressures we have to deal with, and you must have the gumption and the confidence to stand up and say, in this case, he did wrong. I've taken strict disciplinary and punitive action. In that case, it was not wrong. I will defend the officer. And I think that's what ministers are paid to do. But do you agree with the first part of his question, PM, that the earlier generation were more risk? I would say in the earlier generation, you have more, it was a smaller organization, and you had, a, uh, you, uh, I'm not sure about more people, but you had several key people who had an enormous impact on the whole system. People like Go, King Sui, Hon Sui Sen, Lim Kim San, uh, or Jo Pi Le Ng Yam. Uh, in, in that generation, though, they were the ones, they were big Buddhas, but they were also mavericks. And of course, Philip Yeo, who was in EDB for a long time. And you could push and you can make things happen. Now, it's a big organization, you need that kind of mindset, but even if you have that mindset, it's not quite so easy to push and make things happen because it's bigger, it's more settled. Everything which is done has a reason and usually quite a good reason. And if you want to change it, you need an even more powerful reason and you need a push. And we do have to have that push and we must have that freshness to look at it and say, oh, this, we are too settled, we have to change. Not just change things, but change from being settled. Yes. In fact, many people will say, PM, that a Philip Yeo will not be able to survive in today's bureaucracy. <laughs> I'm not sure that is true. He may not emerge, but I have no doubt Philip Yeo today will survive. <laughs> <laughs>